Dylan says, can you discuss how you handle all time management effectively? Are there any programs or shortcuts that help you get more accomplished? Yes, several of them. Um, probably the best, as, as more of a time management um, planning, like productivity type training or, or process or system, I guess I should say, that has really, really helped me a lot. Well, besides work the system, which was by Sam Carpenter, which really got me beyond um, a certain, you know, like glass ceiling that I had hit as a solopreneur. And that's where I learned how to start outsourcing was uh, basically from a $10 book. I got it from Kindle. I think I paid like nine bucks for work the system by Sam Carpenter. Fabulous, outstanding book, changed my entire mindset and really helped me to scale my business quite a bit. Um, and that because of it, it opened up my mind to how to outsource when I all the time, you know, I had always resisted it before. So that was number one. But as far as time management goes, and um, I think one of the best books that I found for that is um, the 12 week year. It's called the 12 week year. It's by one of the guys from the Keller Williams realty office or whatever. I think um, I th no, no, no. I'm thinking of that one thing. Anyways, it's called the 12 week year. There's also recently been um, something very similar. I don't know who originated it, the idea first, but there, I know that there's been kind of in the um, entrepreneurship world right now, there's been some uh, 90 week um, or what is it? A 90 day year plan or something like that. That's being promoted. And it's very similar, right? A 12 week year or a 90 day year. <laughs> I don't know who who came first, which one was the chicken and which one was the egg. I don't know, but I, I can tell you that the twelve week year was very very effective for me as far as how to plan out, um, you know, projects and ninety day cycles as opposed to like twelve month cycles. And we've gotten a shit ton accomplished since we started um, using that. And as far as like just on a daily basis on how to uh, organize your time the best, there's a really good book. It's 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 rather long uh, for for the principle. But um, it's called Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And that's been very effective for me as well. And essentially it just means every, you know, every night uh, plan your day out the, the, for the following day. Just take 15 minutes and use a whiteboard or a scratch pad, you know, something you can write on and write down what is your most important um, activity for the following day. Like, and, and just write a list, you know, one through five or one through six or whatever. Typically you're not going to have more than like five main items, but always put the highest priority, the thing that's going to have the most effect or impact on your business or your your, your finances ha have that is your number one most important item prioritize that and put that at the top of the list and don't work on anything else until that's done now if it's a large project you have to break the large project down into you know bite-sized pieces so to speak and then tackle a piece every single day but my point is if you prioritize like what is the most important activity then you're always focusing on the most important activity because guys remember there's a big difference between being busy and getting shit done right we can all be busy checking emails and you know optimizing title tags of videos that uh, you know have maybe dropped a couple uh, spots in the rankings you know we can always be busy but are we gonna be effective and get, are we gonna get stuff done that's really gonna move our business forward right that's that's what you should always be thinking about what am I doing right now is this the best use of my time what other higher level tasks could I be doing that's going to give me a, you know, advance my business further other than what I'm doing right now? And for all that other stuff, a lot of the other stuff that we do to stay busy is so is oftentimes insignificant and it's stuff that we should be outsourcing anyways or completely just ignore it and forget about it because it's not really going to, you know, move our business forward in, in, whether we do it or not anyways, right? It's insignificant. Yeah, I was I was just about to, to jump in and say, isn't Dylan in, in our mastermind? He is. Yeah. He has access to outsource Kingpin. Apply outsource Kingpin and you're gonna have a lot more free time so that to manage effectively. That's going yep. to free up so much of your time just applying what outsource Kingpin, getting some VAs to help you out to, to take off all all, all, of, all of the tedious crap that you get involved in that you shouldn't be doing because you should be concentrating on how to grow your business not not having to do the grunt work and then everything else you're like an answering every single email going through every single email until you find the important email just tedious shit that you don't need to be doing so dylan outsource kingpin man you'll you're gonna find a whole lot more free time once you go through that and apply it yeah yeah 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with what you guys are saying. And in fact, you know, many, many of your of our students are kind of afraid of outsourcing for two main reasons. One is that they do not have a process in place to so that they can hand it uh, hand over to somebody else, you know, to do to do whatever you're trying to do. So outsource camping will put you in the place that you need to be in order to start generating those process, which do take time and do take work, you know, uh, to start generating those those process. But the reality is that uh, once you generate them, you can hand over those processes to anyone. So that's number one. And number two, many people and I was doing I was making this mistake in the past. And this happens to you know, this I think that this applies to everything in life, not only our work or businesses, but anything in life, like if you do your own gardening, or if you do, I don't know, if you're trying to repair your own car, you know, if you're trying to answer your own emails, like, if you could be, uh, if you could be getting paid, like, I don't know, 250, 300, $500 an hour, and you're making, you know, if you're performing 50 bucks an hour tasks, then you're not saving those $50. In fact, for every hour that you're spending doing that, you have just lost $450. But you opportunity know? cost. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because you have just lost four hundred and fifty dollars. So every time I tend to do something that you know will cost me less than you know ten dollars or twenty, even fifty dollars to complete, and I say I could be doing something else that would give me you know ten times that. I'm not saving that money. I'm actually losing it. You know, I'm losing the upside potential that I could have. So. Uh, thinking like that will allow you to, you know, instead of I'm saving 50 bucks, I'm losing 450 every hour that I'm doing this, we'll put, you know, we'll put things into perspective enough so that you can take action and start outsourcing and start getting VAs. And the good thing about outsource skimping is that it takes the guesswork completely out of the equation because it's a proven process that will get you only the best and the finest VAs. That's another, that's another sticky point, you know. Many people have higher BAs, you know, going to Upwork got, I don't know, 200,000 replies, you know, yeah. and then you need to handpick everything. It's a cumbersome process and maybe you end up um, with subpar people that just disappear, etc. Well, we have, we have gone through that and we have developed a process so that you, don't, you do not need to get that and 95% of it is automated. I, I, it's magic. I, I mean, really, every time we, find, we need to go out and fight some, somebody for semantic mastery, even for, for our own task, like Adam recently or my own, whatever, um, you go out there and you applied outsource camping and you only get the best of the best. And it's crazy the quality of people that you can get working on your team for the price. Sometimes it's mind blowing, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, so it's super, super powerful. Like you could develop a super strong company and a team of committed people without having to break the bank and without having, you know, to go through ninety five percent of of what's stopping you to going through it. So go ahead and check it out. If you, uh, I know that Dylan is in the mastermind, so he gets access to that. If you guys are not uh, if you haven't purchased house, outsource camping, I strongly suggest that you invest that money, which is nothing compared to the upside that you can get, or you can get the, you can join the mastermind and you can get the whole shebang for free. You know, the other products and the $300, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just a thought on that, Dylan, uh, because we had a, uh, you were there. So we had a kind of a, a brief one hour webinar for mastermind members on Monday of this week. And, um, and I was talking specifically about uh, an affiliate campaign that I've been setting up in Masterclass and Mastermind. You guys that are in that are aware of it. But um, I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm, I'm working on driving traffic through AdWords and now uh, Google Display Network as well. And so I'm doing a lot of traffic generation testing right now. And uh, but I've got this affiliate funnel that I've, um, you know, an opt-in funnel where I'm building an email list and I'm doing well at building, you know, right now anywhere between 10 to 15 subscribers per day based upon the PPC campaigns that I have set up. So my, I'm focusing on learning the traffic, the you know, the paid traffic side of things right now. So the email list that I'm building, the autoresponder sequence is terrible because it takes me like two hours. It's, it's very painful for me to write. I can write fairly well, but it just takes me forever. And so in order to have a decent autoresponder sequence, it would literally take me 40, 50, 60 hours to write 
uh, you know, a three or four week autoresponder sequence. I'm not kidding. So it would literally take me a week to two weeks of steady writing all day long or a few hours a day for six or eight weeks. And to me, it's just not worth it. So just like what Hernan was saying, I just went to Upwork and I hired a copywriter. I sent an, a job inv invitation out to five different uh, copywriters, um, told them to respond with a cover letter, some examples of their work. And I found an outstanding copywriter that fits my niche specifically. And I'm purchased, uh, you know, I'm paying them to write the autoresponder sequence. And again, that if, if I would have done it myself, I could have, I could have saved in air quotes, $500 or whatever I'm paying for uh, the autoresponder sequence, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, 250, doesn't matter. I could have, you know, Theoretically, I could have saved that, right? But that's not really what, it, it, what, at what cost? If I was spending two hours a day writing a, an email uh, that I could have been spending two hours a day working on generating more traffic to my opt-in page, which would have give, which would, which would have a better monetary value for me in the long run? You know what I mean? Either building my list or writing an email. So to me, it just, it's a no brainer. It's one of those things like, like Hernan said, there's an opportunity cost to everything you do. So if you're working on $10 an hour stuff, you're not getting the $200 an hour stuff done that you should be doing as your business owner, right? You're the, you're the owner of your own business. You should be working on the high level $200 an hour tasks or, you know, uh, and, and hiring out the $10 an hour tasks or the $5 an hour tasks or even the $50 an hour tasks, if that makes sense.